Um, so this is applying some of the concepts you know about derivatives to solving optimization problems. It sounds like a very sophisticated word. What does it mean to optimize something? Make make something the best that it can be. Find the best solution. Actually, you really did do optimization problems in. I mean, that can include a broad spectrum of things. In grade 11, well, basically what I just said there with the um, the quadratic function representing when to have the test. If you have the test too early, people don't do well. You have the test too late, people don't do well. There's an optimum time in there somewhere where you're going to do as the best that you can. So if this was if this is time and this is your, I don't know, your mark or something like that, your score, you want to find the, the vertex of that parabola. You can do that in grade 11 by just, you know, using grade 11, completing the square and finding the vertex of the parabola. But we can now do, since we can use derivatives, it's actually easier to find it using derivatives just by looking at for critical points. Uh, where the derivative of zero are undefined, and then you can use any kind of a function. You're not limited to just quadratic functions. So the, the concept is the same. Probably if you looked at the steps like this for any problem solving thing, you know, draw a picture of it. That's probably the same as what you would have done in grade eight. If there's, if it helps to draw a picture, draw a picture. Write some kind of a formula for the quantity that you're going to be maximizing or minimizing. Use as many variables as you want to and then just start to eliminate them. This is what you call a mathematical model, right? Well, it, I was a little quick on the switching to the yellow highlighter. I was too quick for it. Uncross it out. You take some of the other conditions and come up with uh, expressions for other variables. It doesn't matter. I mean, in, when you're doing problem solving grade 8 and 9, you didn't know how to work with systems of equations, so you were limited to using one variable, and you had to write all the other expressions in terms of that variable. The more intuitive way is to just make a list of everything that's unknown and then write everything you could possibly write about how they're all related, and then combine them together until you get a function for whatever it is you're maximizing or minimizing in terms of one other variable. And it doesn't necessarily matter what the one other variable is. Some people will choose something different than other people. These are, you know, not really, they're just sort of, you know, abstract problems to start with. But it, it lets you look at the concept here. Find two numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is as large as possible. I would encourage you to try and think about what you think the solution is before you start, because... I, I mean, grade eights, if you give them this, they say, oh, I can figure it out without your stupid method. I don't need to learn this, all this stuff you're showing us. I hope you're mature enough to realize we're, you're learning a method, but we're starting with simple stuff, right? We're starting with something simple, not because you want to solve problems like this. I know this is, looks like a really exciting problem, but you're, you're learning it so you can solve real problems that aren't ones you can solve by just thinking about what the numbers are whose product is as large as possible, well, you could just sit and experiment with the numbers. If they had to add up to 20, probably you, you'd guess 10 and 10. Yeah. because the, And if you're calling that X and Y, and you can call this P for product, it's 100. Now, perhaps I should move that down a bit so you can see. If you made them 9 and 11, you get 99. If you make them 11 and 9, you get 99. And it's going to drop off as you go either direction here, right? You get 96, and if you reverse it here, you get 96. If you graph that, this is actually the pattern, you know, this is a this is going to be a quadratic function. This, as a function of either one of the other two, is a quadratic function. This is the vertex, right? If you, if you graph the thing, you'd find that it looks like a, a quadratic function where the vertex is right there at... 10, and this is 100, and it drops off like this. If this continued down here to 0 and 20, well, the product is 0, so it would cross there. It's going to be a quadratic function that looks like that. That maximum point is 10 is one of the numbers, and 100 is the, is the product. So the only problem people have is they think they're writing sometimes a, like a relationship between those two. You, if you have more than one variable, 
as in if you start, you can start by, you know, if you're doing this algebraically, this, this is doing it numerically, just looking at a table, right? And you can solve problems that way. And, and I would encourage you to kind of check your answer and verify things by just making a, you know, a table in your calculator or spreadsheet or whatever. It's not, it's not hard to do, right? I mean, in reality, maybe this is what, this is how you would solve it, or this is what your first method would be here, but it's not hard to, uh, it's obviously hard for me to talk and think about what I'm looking for here at the same time. You could do that. You could, <laughs> you could, you could, uh, you could say here's X, here's Y, and here's the product. Oh, you're worried about the viewers at home? You could do this and you could say if this is zero and this is equal to Actually, in this one, I got to do. Sorry, this one is equal to this one plus one, and then we fill that down, right? Whoa. And then you do this one is equal to twenty minus this one. That's how you get two things. That's how you get things that add up to twenty, right? And then this one is equal to. What are we doing? We're doing this one is that times B2. And then you can fill this down. Like that's, I mean, that's a way to solve the problem numerically, right? You could, okay, that's, that's the same. You're, you're, a, bit, you're a bit too uh, ready to, ready to give the applause. Where did you find this much? Uh, Excel is a is a good program. Not necessarily the brand name Excel, but a spreadsheet is a is a good method to solve that we don't actually use that much in math, and probably just because you know technology is limited access in classrooms. But you can check, you know, you could check, uh, you can check that on a calculator. You can check it on whatever. You can generate a table like that pretty easily and check your answer. Well, I mean, when you have a function put in your calculator, you can just flip over to the table and see. It'll show you this column compared to this. The problem there is you have to write the function in the first place. Um, although I guess you could call it, you know, y1 could be those values, and then y2 could be 20 minus y1. I mean, you could set it up sort of the same way if you want. But anyways, if you're solving it like that, you know, that's a good way to confirm it numerically. But you, you are responsible to know how to do it algebraically. Algebraically, the hardest part is coming up with a function in the first place. So if you set up that P is the product, and I guess we should start with, you should probably start with uh, the good old thing that mathematicians do. Let X equal one number. Or you could say Y equal... <laughs> You're only saying this because it's it's giving you flashbacks, uh, <laughs> negative flashbacks. The other number, I would always word it how they are in here. You can call them, you could say let x and y equal the two numbers, whatever, right? And you start with that, and I've filled up half my space with this, but you can move it over. I mean, the important part is... Uh, is this is the important part to start, right? So somebody's following your work. And then just write down anything you know about how they're related to each other. P is X times Y. Now this in and itself is not enough to get going because you have three variables. You have this as a function of two other numbers and we, we don't do multivariable stuff. We do a function of one variable, right? So you need something else. This is the function we're maximize, right? Maximize this. <laughs> You're maximizing the product. Yeah, so then you need another another thing that relates x and y. X plus, x plus y is 20. That's what we just did here. We looked for the, the numbers that gave us a maximum. No, you don't. You're gonna. You're gonna. Well, if you were here on time, you would have had the preliminary stuff. And uh, oh. 
Oh, you're gonna have to. <laughs> Ten minutes. Okay. Oh, because we stopped to talk about this. 